We have been through uh, quite an ordeal as a nation. It won't be the last, unfortunately. It's a couple of weeks ago, and I've said this for a long time, actually, but a couple of weeks ago, I restated my view that ultimately, if there's one issue that this election may boil down to, and I'm not going to say election cycle, that's the new buzzword. I hate buzzwords. If there's one issue that will ultimately be the overriding one that really ought to be considered, it's the issue of the Constitution and our Second Amendment. That's what's really on the table here, ultimately. Believe it. Now, we've all seen Obama and Hillary uh, anti-gun, calling uh, semi-automatic Mac rifles assault rifles, uh, virtually machine guns, which they aren't. Uh, in fact, the military M16s aren't fully automatic anymore. They haven't been for quite some time, I'm told. They're uh, either semi-automatic, you pull the trigger, around fires, or if you switch to burst, you can pull the trigger and three rounds will fire. They no longer go fully automatic. You'll burn up a clip in, you know, six, eight seconds if you do. So it's an issue of semi-automatic. What qualifies as an assault rifle? I, I don't have an answer for that. Virtually any rifle can be an assault rifle. In World War I and parts of World War II, they were single shot, single action, bolt action rifles. They weren't semi-automatics until uh, World War II got well underway. The issue here is what do we do about allowing Americans to exercise their Second Amendment rights to defend themselves? Uh, as Donald Trump said when somebody tried to ambush him on one of the, it was a Today, Today Show, that's what it was. This wretched little woman tried to uh, say, well, what do you have to say about semi-automatic rifles? And how do you justify the assault weapon? And he says, wait a minute. He said, Every, everybody that wants one has one. There are millions of them out there semi-automatics. And he says, are you telling me that, I'm paraphrasing, that you're going to ask Americans to defend themselves against criminals who will always have semi-automatic rifles in their home or place of work or wherever with a, a single shot BB gun? He did say BB gun. And of course she couldn't answer that. She did say, can you name one example of somebody who's used a semi-automatic rifle to defend themselves? What, a, what an airheaded thing to say. Stupid. Uh, we have Hillary Clinton. Uh, obviously, this was a fix from the beginning. She was going to be anointed, crowned, and installed as the party nominee. There's ample evidence of vote fraud all along the way of this primary season. Bernie Sanders won only two of the final six. I doubt it. Uh, several of those showed clear signs of odd vote profiling. Uh, we have today another story about her emails, which clearly exposes her as having been caught once again lying. She said none of those emails were marked secret. In point of fact, many of them were. Uh, that's come out. And now we have the issue of, of her and Obama. And I hope you did read the story about Obama's dilemma that I have in headlines. If you haven't, please do. Uh, he has to choose... Uh, a most uncomfortable choice for the commander-in-chief. He has to choose whether or not to criticize his beloved Islam or criticize, somehow take to task, his beloved homosexuality. So it's a very well-written story, and I hope you'll read it and understand that uh, there are... And this was written, by the way, by a, a, a homosexual male that I know in, in New Zealand. Very honorable man. A very forthright story. Uh, okay, last thing I'm going to say. Hillary Clinton is now under fire, and she should be, for her prior statements on radical Islam. She won't even use that expression, by the way. She did tweet uh, six, seven months ago. She said, Muslims have nothing whatsoever to do with terrorism. Does that offend any of you people? <laughs> Dear friends, uh, any of you who vote for this woman are out of your minds. You're crazy. This woman is a psychopathic liar who lives in la-la land. Muslims, she tweeted, have nothing whatsoever to do with terrorism. And then she said, I have clearly said we have terrorist enemies who use Islam to justify slaughtering innocent people. 
Uh, look, I'm going to use a word here I don't use on the air. What bullshit? It doesn't get any more egregious than that. The woman is sick. Sick, twisted, demented. Uh, it's got to end. It's got to stop. We cannot take another Clinton in the White House, period. This is a special hour report. We won't take a break at the bottom. I've asked Joel Skousen to come on here, the editor of World Affairs Brief, and share his thoughts on this. The hypocrisy, Joel, is beyond belief. Well, it is, Jeff. Uh, there's obviously a massive agenda uh, towards uh, another gun, yet another gun control push. And uh, I was watching NPR News tonight, the uh, NPR News Hour, and uh, I tell you, they spent the whole hour pushing two agendas, and that is increased protection for a favorite group now that must be protected at all costs, and that's the LGBT uh, <coughs> lobby, and yeah. and then gun control. They had Diane Feinstein talking about her uh, her legislation, which uh, has never got off the ground until now, and that is that we must stop terrorists from having weapons. And of course, that means that she won't allow anyone, if her bill passes, who's on a terror watch list from buying a weapon. And the problem with that, of course, is that you can get on a terror watch list just from mistaken identity. And she said when they asked her a token question, uh, you know, well, what about those that, you know, may not be terrorists on the list? Well, they can go and prove their innocence. They can. Uh, oh. Do you hear what she oh. said? They can go and oh. prove their oh. innocence. Oh, my God. Is that sort of like guilty until proven innocent? Uh, I think That's so. exactly what she was saying. They can prove their innocence. They can challenge this. You know, but there is no challenge. Or no one has been successfully been able to challenge this uh, no-fly list uh, in court. Uh, no, they haven't. That's it, important. It, 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 because right. it's secret. Yeah. And the government refuses to participate. Uh, we will not say whether or not the person is on the list. So <clears throat> this is a, a tremendous, a powerful agenda. But the thing I want to point out is that there is evidence surfacing. And let me just preface this by saying, as a former Marine officer, having gone through full combat training in the Vietnam era, uh, I the first thing I heard about this when I said, you know, 50 people were killed and over 53 wounded, and I, uh, you know, with an assault rifle, I said, wait a minute, that's six magazines. You mean to tell me a person goes off and, and changes six magazines and doesn't ever get attacked? Either these are a bunch of wimps, you know, in this place, or something's wrong. And sure enough, evidence is surfacing of uh, more than one shooter. This is very, very reminiscent of what happened in the San, uh, San Bernardino shooting. You know, you had the, the Patsy couple, the, the Muslims that uh, were right, right. cast the entire blame, and yet we have actual ABC and CBS interviews with people talking directly about three muscular male shooters and nothing about a woman being present. And, uh, and of course, that was only aired once, and those... That was San Bernardino, yeah. That's right. They disappeared. Yeah. The, even the media who took that interview and refused to ask any follow-up questions refused to air any of that again. In other words, uh, there were patsies set up. Uh, but I'll tell you, as a Marine officer, a combat-trained Marine officer, you'd have a hard time, you know, sitting there mowing down 100 people you know, changing magazines and not getting assaulted, you know, by someone if you're a single person trying to do this. I, I don't, uh, let me say one thing. I don't know much about the, the gay uh, subculture, but it may be that uh, they're, they're not the most macho uh, of people and they, they run, maybe they hid, maybe they were intimidated. I don't know. I'm just speculating here, but you're right. Are these all, did this one guy nail 50 people, crack shot and kill 50 people, or did many of them lay on the floor and slowly die, as I think happened, because the police were too cowardly to go in there for three hours. Inexcusable. I hope there are massive lawsuits against that chief and against that city. Those cops take an oath, Joel, to protect and serve. If they have to put their lives on the line, they do it. They should have gone into that building immediately. The one woman who came out and this was on, I think, ABC, and said to the police, who were already out front, minutes later, she said, why aren't you going in there? And they, they didn't say anything. They backed away. They hid for three hours. And then they drove in there, through the wall with their armored car, blasted the hell out of the place, and probably killed some of the innocent hostages in the bathroom. 
That's the latest speculation. So completely negligent and incompetent and grotesquely botched from the beginning. That's my view. Well, someone, there is one witness who said that someone was barring the door so that people couldn't leave. Yeah. That's one, that's one accomplice. Uh, but I'm very suspicious that this is a pre-made patsy. They know way too much about it. Let me tell you some of the contradictions here. Here you have a person who works in law enforcement for G4 security, has passed two background checks, and yet the FBI said they spent 10 months doing background checks on this because he was under suspicion of terrorism yeah, and, yeah. and found nothing. <laughs> now, right. you, don't, you don't stay with 10 months for somebody and, finding, uh, and find nothing, right. and you don't pass a background check after you've had that kind of scrutiny from the FBI. Oh, that's flagged immediately, you bet. Exactly, so something really smells here about the whole thing, and to me, it appears that this is a person who was schooled and prompted and, and uh, you know, to do the act, but they had some other shooters in there, yeah. uh, and, and those never get caught, just Did like you, the San Bernardino shooting. The yeah. three actual shooters never got caught. The focus was entirely all too quickly on the two patsies that uh, were then killed. Well, uh, then we have the issue of the Boston bomber, uh, the older brother, shown naked, handcuffed, being put into a, the back of a police cruiser. And the next thing we know, oh, gee, his brother ran him over several times with the SUV. Yeah. He's dead. Yeah. Come on. I've seen the videos. Everyone's seen the videos. Who cares? That stinks, too. Now, this one, one of the survivors or, or said... the younger brother writing a confession with his blood, a confession oh, with his blood yeah. in the, inside of the boat. In the I boat, mean, please. How believable is that? That's absurd. It's just absurd. Uh, one witness said he heard the shooter say there were three others involved, one sniper, uh, another guy, and a woman. Now, maybe those others held the doors. I don't know. Uh, we don't have evidence of a sniper. Maybe there was supposed to be a sniper across the street to take down first responders. There were no reports of any shooting outside, so I don't know if that's true. But we do have a witness claiming the guy claimed that there were four total people involved. Well, as I say, after San Bernardino, uh, which yeah. was clearly a setup, which was clearly a government operation with hired thugs. I mean, look, that's what happened in the Paris attacks. It's interesting that, you know, the witnesses at the restaurants said that these were two white guys coming out of the Mercedes, big, tall, muscular military types spraying with utter calmness automatic weapons get into the car and they never put an APB out for any Mercedes only the Volkswagen kind of like Mossad uh, troops eh? Hmm? agents you know so as I say you know uh, there has to be a silencing of, uh, of the uh, of the media I mean this reporter who interviewed the guy in San Bernardino talking about the the three muscular white guys who were do the, doing the shooting and to have that reporter, you know, what happened to my story? You know, it doesn't get aired again. Somebody has to be silenced. I mean, reporters have to be, you know, cautioned and uh, and put on the uh, on the chopping block several times a year. You know, when these terrorist things come up, when they see too much, you can't tell me that they work for you know in a neutral mode. Uh, these people, you know, are very very weak need if they don't stand up to their editors and and cry foul about these kinds of stories that are covered up. Well, they are weak need. They don't, they don't care. They just care about their job and their celebrity. That's all they care about. And this, I'm so sick of this uh, ambush, confrontational, agenda-driven, alleged journalism against uh, Donald Trump. It, it's, it is an obscenity beyond measure. How this man has stood up to that kind of insult and done so so gracefully most of the time, I it just I, he's really got my, I respect that guy, what he's been through. Having been in the media for a long time, I know what they're doing, and it's really ugly. Well, it was very obvious on NPR this evening either. They put a token Republican in there and to say, let's see what the Republican response is oh, after yeah. Diane Feinstein talking about this. And, you know, she must have tried Gwen Eiffel, you know, three or four times to say, now, what about what gun control measures can we do to stop these? Do you, would you favor an assault ban? And he wouldn't be brought into that. He kept saying, and it was a very poor answer, by the way, you know, about, well, we've got to take the fight to ISIS and we've got to stop the narrative and we've right, got to stop right. the propaganda and all this. And then she kept coming back time and again. Well, is there anything 
that you would do to further restrict these kinds of assault weapons getting in the hands of terrorists? <laughs> you know, is there anything that you would do? And he wouldn't answer it. I mean, he obviously mm. knew what was coming up, mm-hmm. but clearly a massive show of prejudice and bias on the part of the both Woodruff and, and Eiffel. Oh, yeah. On NPR trying to push the gun control agenda. Yeah. And, of course, they, they showed the clip of uh, Obama talking about you know, is this the America we want? You know, and we had Sandy Hook and nothing happened. And Diane Feinstein meant that we thought Sandy Hook and, and nobody would pass. Well, you know, you just said something maybe funny. They, nothing did happen at Sandy Hook. <laughs> <laughs> maybe they finally will. And uh, uh, so I think this is clearly a gun control agenda. Um, I, I'm surprised they didn't, you know, maybe it's too pat, you know, to have some right wing uh, <clears throat> conservative do this. Uh, it happened to be a terrorist, uh, mm-hmm. uh, or at least someone that they can pin the, the terrorist label on. But uh, this, uh, at the same time, continues to foment the war on terror. So that's something that's a very popular agenda for the for the globalists. They've got to continue intervening around the world, and this gins up, uh, you know, Donald Trump to do more intervention around the world and stops his, you know, semi-isolationist point of view that we need to be careful about intervening around the world. And I've always predicted that Trump can be manipulated either by flattery or by a terrorist event that will cause him to react very strongly. And of course, if you do send the military out and really expect them to go after ISIS, uh, it would do an awful lot because ISIS right now is a controlled U.S. and British intelligence and, and Israeli Mossad intelligence operation, and it would go down fairly fast if you really let the military loose. But, you know, even as the military pilots have, uh, have told me, you know, you get assigned to do a target out there in the desert, a building, we don't know if there's any ISIS in there. We drop the bombs, we kill the building, but who knows if they've given them the dance warning to, to be out of there, and of course we oh, know they have. Leaflets, sure. The famous leaflet like drop the, the, for the yeah. petroleum oil truck tank. drivers. Yeah. And, they, and the U.S. has never attacked another oil convoy since. That was Not, just tokenism right. because the Russians embarrassed them. Yeah. The yeah. Russians embarrassed them and said, look at this convoy, and we took it out. What are you doing in the United States? So they took out a convoy after warning the drivers to stay away. And then that's the last time we've ever seen a convoy bomb by him. Doesn't that shame you, ladies and gentlemen, who are in, some of you are overseas, but you folks in America, doesn't it shame you? You must be just disgusted at what this country is up to. It's not you, it's not I, it's not Joel, it's the alleged government. We have been taken over. A coup d'etat, JFK, ever since then, this has not been our country. Now we have a man who is promising to at least try to make America what it was and could have been, and look at the look at the abuse he is taking. All right, I'm going to go back to this this Hillary thing. This woman is beyond evil. You cannot, and I don't know what to tell people who say we need a woman in the White House. So I'm voting for her. I, in a way, I think those people should be disqualified from voting. I hate to say it, but that's no criteria to make a choice. You're supposed to look at the issues, study the, the positions of the candidates, make a logical, pragmatic evaluation. I'm going to tell you again, Hillary Clinton tweeted six months ago, Muslims, quote, have nothing whatsoever to do with terrorism. What planet is that witch on? The neocon, globalist, Marxist, Bolshevik tool Hillary Psycho Clinton. And, and when that book comes out, the Secret Service agent, the ex-Secret Service agent, get it and read it and pass it around to your Hillary friends and challenge them to read it. Even your doggy or certain pages, challenge them to read 10 pages. This is not the caliber of human being we want to lead this country, period. It's called crisis of character. Yeah, that's it. 